Hey guys, it's JD from Pond's Little World, and today we're unboxing and reviewing this digital temperature controller made by W. Teske. Now this is a $46 digital temperature controller that you guys can find on Amazon. Links will be down below this video if you want to go pick this thing up. And um, cause there's not really much more to say about it other than the fact that this thing is kind of an interesting product. Um, I knew how it worked a little while ago. and it's, it's kind of complicated. So I'll explain it uh, later on how it works. And of course I'll demonstrate it also. So on the front here, digital temperature controller, W Teske. On the side here, it looks like it works with an app. So we'll try that out. Has a, a large display as you can see right there easy manual and alarm so that's pretty nice on the uh, back of the front here basically the same thing as up here and then we also have the uh, side here shows how to set it up with the app right there looks like it works with the uh, smart life app and then the specifications right here so uh, let's go ahead and open it up looks like you open it from the top here and let's pull everything out so it looks like here we have the, uh, so we have one of the probes right there. Pretty cool. Has a little suction cup on it. And then we also have the, uh, the main unit itself here. There it is with the screen on the front. Here's the buttons right here. Then we also have the, uh, the outlets right here. This is for cooling, this is for heating. So in the heating, you would plug in like a, a little space heater or in the uh, cooling, you would probably plug in something like a small, uh, maybe a small AC unit. And then we also have the power cord here. And we also in the box have a uh, user manual and that's it. So there it is. So I guess what I'll do now is go ahead and plug it up and uh, pair it up to the app. Go ahead and see how it works. All right, so here we have the uh, temperature controller. Um, all set up, there's not really any setting up to do other than plugging in the probe here and also setting the uh, settings for the minimum and maximum temperature. So you can see right here, it says uh, it's 62.9 degrees right now. Uh, that's just the ambient temperature right here. Uh, that's what it's saying and that's probably relatively accurate. Uh, you really need to leave it in the same spot for a couple of hours for it to actually get used to, you know, the uh, temperature around it. Um, in this case, I just moved it around a little bit, so it's kind of not exactly 100% sure on what the temperature is. Um, but let me show how to use it. Um, it seems to be pretty simple so far. So first of all, the power button, press it, and it turns it off just like that. I think you have to hold it, but now you do have to hold it for it to turn off and on. And it beeped. Come on. Why is it beeping? Oh, there we go. Okay, I don't know why it's beeping, but uh, there you go. Oh, okay, so that must put it into pairing mode to actually pair it to the app. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I get that now. So it looks like maybe you just, okay, so you do just tap it to turn it off and on. If you actually hold it, then it'll make that beeping sound and going to pairing mode. So, okay, that's pretty nice. Um, you also have the uh, your settings right here, which is just changes between Celsius and Fahrenheit, right there. And if you hold it from here, you can set the uh, maximum and minimum temperature. So, uh, for example, if you're using this in like a greenhouse and you don't want the temperature in there to get above uh, 93.2 degrees, then what you do is you set this to whatever the maximum temperature is. And then whenever it reaches that maximum temperature, it will turn on the cooling socket on here. And then, you know, whatever you have plugged into it will then turn on. You also can set the uh, minimum right here. So I go through it. And then actually I think you have to uh, hold it again. I just did this and then go, okay, yeah, you do have to hold it. And then you could cycle through the uh, minimum and the, or sorry, the maximum and the minimum temperature. So then, for example, if it reaches down to uh, 71 degrees and you want it to be a little bit warmer than 71, then set it to 71 degrees. And when it reaches that, it will then turn on the heating socket, which you could have like, you know, a little space heater or something like that plugged in. Uh, for this, 
I'm actually going to plug in a uh, just a little space heater, I believe a, a black or black and decker or whatever. And then for the um, cooling, I'm just going to plug in a um, just a little portable AC unit, you know, one that blows uh, just mist, uh, you know, mist air. Uh, to kind of try and cool down the room. That's just for demonstration purposes. Obviously, if you actually have this thing and you're cooling a, you know, a big area, you're gonna want to plug in an actual like AC unit, uh, like a little window unit or something like that to this. Uh, you also have here the up button, and I believe this. I believe if you just hold the up button, it actually does uh, nothing. But if you hold the down button, this turns off and on the buzzer which is pretty cool. So right now the buzzer is off. If you hold it, it'll turn it back on. Also, I'll just uh, show you guys the instructions here. Maybe yours didn't come with them, or if you're wondering how to use it, I like showing the instructions to you guys. Just in case you're wondering anything, you can see here, if you wanna uh, look at any of this, pause the video. That's how you uh, use it. It's explaining what everything does. Product description right there specifications, how to download the app. And then this is how to uh, register the, or not register the app, but register like an account onto the app. And then uh, partially how to set it up right there. And then we'll go on to uh, getting to know the Smart Life app, which is uh, obviously the app I'm going to use in just a minute button operation right there and you can see this is how to actually operate the uh, temperature controller from the well temperature controller itself not using the app right there pretty cool all right so uh, what i'm going to do now is go ahead and grab one of my uh, extra phones go in and download download uh smart life on it pair it up to this all right, so I now have it paired up to the Smart Life app here. It's very simple to uh, set up. You don't even need to make an account, uh, but I would advise making an account or else some features might uh, not be available. Anyways, uh, again, very simple. You can see here, this is the uh, the kind of the main menu here. It shows the temperature that it is right now. It shows the highest, which you can set here, as you can see. And then you could also set the lowest. It also shows a, a little indicator here on if it's uh, cooling right now or if it's actually heating, which you can see by the little flame icon right there, it is heating up and also shows it on the phone here. You also have a master on and off switch. You also have a, a chart here just to show the statistics if you're interested. Looks like you can uh, you, or choose a date right there. It's pretty cool. You also here have your uh, settings. This is for cooling delay only turn on cooling after a set time. You also have your high temperature alarm, which is quite nice. You can set the uh, temperature right there or you could completely turn it off or on if you uh, choose. You also have your uh, low temperature alarm right there, along with a temperature calibration and a temperature sw uh, scale switching. Okay, so I assume that's, yeah, uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then you also, it looks like uh, right here, I believe this is to uh, yeah, okay, so this is just uh, kind of settings for the Smart Life app. Um, you can see here, you can set the name, device information, uh, third party control, share device, etc. You can remove the device, uh, update the device, which it actually had an update uh, already available for it. And so when I uh, paired it up to Smart Life app, it asked if I wanted to update the, uh, the actual uh, uh, temperature controller itself, which I found kind of cool. And um, it was a very quick update, only took maybe 30 seconds to uh, download and install. So that is quite nice. Uh, it looks like also the, uh, the little Wi-Fi icon uh, right here is now solid, indicating that it is paired up uh, to the app. Anyway, so uh, now I'm going to go ahead and plug in the, um, my, uh, I, I guess you could call it again, the portable AC unit and also the um, little space heater and go and see how it works. All right, so here is my setup, and I know it kind of looks crazy, and that's because it is. It's only set up like this to show you guys on video. Uh, one thing that I want to point out so far that I do not like is the plug here. The heating and the cooling uh, plug is just way too close, in my opinion, especially if you have 
uh, plug ends this big. Uh, you can see here the prongs are actually exposed on both of them. Uh, that is far from ideal. Obviously that can short out and cause a fire. This is only for demonstration purposes. Uh, if you have this in like your shed or whatever like this, uh, figure out something else or else, you know, it will short together, probably cause a fire. Um, again, the only reason like it's like this is just for uh, demonstration purposes. So if you have plugs this big, uh, they might be too close together and won't work. So keep that in mind. Uh, but anyways, you can see right here, we have the space heater running and that's because it's below the minimum that I set. So right now I have the heater to go on at 70 degrees and currently it's 66 degrees in the room, so it's doing its job. Now, once we heat the probe end up right here to uh, above 81 degrees is what I have it set as, it will turn on the little uh, AC right over here and will you know, cool down the room, obviously, if you had it at a bigger scale. This little thing, it isn't gonna cool an entire room or at least not quickly enough for me to show you on video. So, uh, pretend this is just the normal ambient air in like a shed or something. The only reason I'm going to put the probe into the space heater is just to make it quickly, uh, to quickly show you on video. So let's go ahead and do that. Put the probe up to the uh, space heater now. And you can see on screen, it's actually going up very quickly. And now it should give power to the, the AC thing right here, which I actually have to, uh, and you see it's about 95 degrees right now. So it's playing that little chime. It's saying, hey, it's way over temperature wise. There you go. And it just gave power to that. And then you can turn it on and then it will start cooling down. So it does take it a second after it heats up, it takes it probably a good 10, 15 seconds to turn on power to the next. Uh, plug. So keep that in mind. Next what I'll do is put it in front of here and then once this drops below uh, 70 degrees it should turn back on the space heater. Again obviously you don't have to do this in real life. Um, the only reason I'm putting it up to like the uh, space heater and this little AC here is just to quickly cool it down to show you guys that it does in fact work. Give a second here. It's getting there. And there you go, turned off. And it should now, give it just a second. Uh, it, it clearly takes it a minute, which I found uh, kind of interesting. Looks like it's hovering at about, yeah, there we go. Okay, so it should turn back on the space heater right there. And you can see now the space heater is on. So, um, so far, other than, you know, me obviously having to put the um, the probe right up to the uh, devices. Again, that's just to quickly show you on video. You don't have to do that in real life, obviously. Um, it seems to be working fine, uh, of course, other than the prongs right here. I wish those were farther apart uh, so then they could be, you know, fully seated down. But, um, yeah, that's so far... So far, really the only complaint I have. So there it is. So I guess what I'll do now, set this clip and give you guys my final opinions. All right, so overall, what do I think of this temperature controller? Uh, so far, again, this is kind of just uh, initial impressions. I haven't had a long-term test with this thing, uh, but so far it seems to be working fine. It goes on when it needs to, and if it goes way over that temperature, it does uh, play that alarm, which I find uh, quite cool, actually. Uh, I think that's a pretty nice feature. Uh, so, so far, I've been pretty happy with it, other than the fact that these prongs here, uh, they're just too close together. If you have, you know, a large end like that, um, they're not going to fit. That's the bottom line. I barely even got these to fit. Um, so if you actually, you know, are going to have this as a long-term solution um, for whatever, you can't have the prongs like that or else something bad is going to happen. Uh, not to mention that it puts a lot of stress on the uh, prongs in here and it could ruin it over time. The other thing, um, this uh, this little suction pad right here or whatever, I, it doesn't really like to stick to anything. I even tried it on some glass earlier and it didn't really stick. It pretty much just fell off. Um, another thing, and this isn't really a complaint, uh, it's more of my fault, I guess. Um, but for example, like that little AC unit right there, 
uh, AC thing, whatever you just want to call it. Uh, it doesn't, you know, it'll cool a whole room eventually, um, but it'll take it a long time. But um, that thing there, after you supply power to it via like, you know, a wall plug or something, you then have to go and press the power button for it to actually turn on. If you're gonna be using this thing, that's not gonna work, or else you're gonna to have to go into your greenhouse or whatever each time and press the button on that. So make sure whatever devices you have, that once they get power, that they will turn on automatically and you won't have to manually press a button or else it just you know won't work. You'll have to go in each time and that's a massive waste of time. Um, so that's really my only complaints about this thing. Other than that, it seems to be doing good. So just make sure you have a small uh, sized uh, end with the prongs on it so then they fit here. And also make sure that you have a device that turns on automatically after you supply power. Other than that, this thing seems to be doing very nice. So uh, yeah, I guess that's really it for this video. Hope everybody enjoyed. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see y'all next time. Goodbye.